Use a tube breaker to break both ends of the sorbent tube to provide an opening at least one half the internal diameter. Insert the open sorbent tube into the adjustable low flow holder's rubber sleeve with the arrow on the tube pointed toward the holder. If the tube does not have an arrow, then place the end of the sorbent tube with the smallest sorbent section, backup section, into the tube holder toward the pump. Remember, a field blank should be collected for each sample set and should accompany the monitor during all periods except actual sampling. For more detailed information, watch the Galson field blanks instructional video. Attach the pump to the worker's belt toward their side or back. Attach the sorbent tube on or near the front of the shirt collar or as close as practical to the nose and mouth of the employee. Position the excess tubing so that it does not interfere with the work of the employee. Be sure to use the tube covers whenever possible to protect the employee from the open ends of the glass tubes. Tube covers cannot be used when a pre-filter must be used or with a sampling train that has multiple tubes. Turn on the pump and record the starting time to the minute and the initial flow rate. The counter records the minutes the pump is operating and should read zero when you start the test. You can enter the time and counter number notes on the field pump data sheet. Observe the pump operation for a short time after starting to make sure it is operating correctly. Check to ensure hose connection is screwed tightly to eliminate leaks. It is a good idea to check the pump throughout the workday to make sure it is still operating at the flow rate you set. Ensure that the sampler is still assembled properly and that the hose has not become pinched or detached from the media or the pump. These intraday checks of the sampler are also a good time to collect information about employee tasks. You could take photographs and record detailed information about visible airborne contaminants, work practices, potential chemical interferences, and other conditions that may help explain sample results. After sampling is complete, turn off the pump, record the time, seal the sorbent tube with the red caps provided, and remove the sampling equipment. Label the sample media. Perform a post calibration in an area with the same approximate temperature as was used during the pre-calibration. Then record the flow rate on the pump calibration sheet. Follow the sample storage and shipping instructions exactly. If you will be storing the sorbent tubes as the method allows, be sure to use an uncontaminated area. Sorbent tubes should not be stored or shipped with bulk samples that might contaminate the media. Complete the chain of custody form. It is important that you include all the information requested in order to ensure the proper handling and turnaround time of your samples. Please indicate what process was being sampled, such as welding, electroplating, etc., in the comments section of the chain of custody form. Remove the pink copy and keep this for your records. Send the white and yellow copies in with the samples to the lab in the large Ziploc bag. Please place any unused media inside the Ziploc bag marked with the orange unused media label. This will indicate that these items should not be analyzed and will be properly disposed of by Galson Laboratories. Questions? Contact SGS Galson by phone or IH live chat 303-566-7000.